Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney. I go by Courtney on Posh on all platforms and today I have my PFF Danny with me. Danny, where can we find you? Hey guys, um, you can find me on Instagram at thrift underscore fish and on Poshmark at just thrift fish. Love it. And you also have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, I do. And I think if you just search thrift fish with a space in between, it'll pop up. Perfect. I'm going to link all of those down below. And Danny, how long have you been thrifting or reselling for? Sure. I have been reselling for about two years now. Um, I started on Poshmark in March of 2018. Um, I didn't really start like fully reselling until that summer, but yeah, it's been almost two years now. And on your Instagram, I love how you're like a full-time-ish <laughs> seller. Why, why that um, ish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I've had an interesting transition. Um, I was working full-time with a company last year, and January 1st this year, I transitioned to working part-time with them so that I could sort of be full-time reselling. Um, I originally was going to go full, full-time. But when I like tried to resign from my job, they offered me part time. And I was like, I think that's probably a smart idea. Like, um, I still like the company I work with and everything. So um, it's going to have a little bit of stable, uh, reliable income while I'm kind of transitioning to full time. So I think that's so cool. That's definitely such a blessing, too, that they were able to do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're thrifting, is thrifting your favorite part of the process? I yeah. feel like this is for most of us. When you're thrifting, what is the very first thing that you're going to hit in the thrift store? So I think it's usually shoes. Um, if it's not like new racks um, or go back racks, um, usually shoes. Yeah, shoes. <laughs> and what is your favorite thing that you've ever found? Oh my gosh. Um, it was probably two new with tags, Johnny was dresses just hanging out. Oh yeah. Dress rack. I was like, <laughs> that is something that I would just, and for anyone who's new, not all thrift stores have just in racks. Um, but most all thrift stores have a go back rack or a spot near a dressing room that you can find things that people tried on that they no longer like. And those racks are just, if you have them, they are money Two new tag Johnny. Were they maxi dresses or were they Shorter um, they were kind of like tunic dresses, um, but they were super, like, they seemed, like, really new. So wow. they were not, not like an outdated style or anything. So, yeah. I am so jealous. And what's one brand outside of Johnny Was that, if like, would just be your dream brand to find? So right now, I think it's Doen. Doen's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just have the most beautiful pieces, mm -hmm. and they have a good resale value as well. Yeah, yeah. What about items that used to move really well or brands that used to move really well that just no longer are moving for you? Yeah, I think, um, and a lot of people experience this with like different uh, jeans brands. Um, I actually made a video on YouTube a little while ago that was brands I stopped picking up, but then I was like, dot, 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 unless. Um, so like J brand, uh, page seven for all mankind, but I just got a pair of dojos the other day to sell. Um, so that's, you know, there's still some styles that I'll pick out, but for the most part, those things like cabbie and soft surroundings, um, I've definitely slowed down on those as well. So maybe some of the more mature, um, mature brands, um, some piece, again, some pieces I'll still pick up, but I've definitely slowed down a lot on those. Yeah. So after you've gone thrifting, uh, what's the rest of your process like? So I bring everything home, um, you know, process through it, hang it up, steam it. I've got my rack behind me. This is like my little office area. So everything comes in here. Um, I will process everything, which is basically what I call research, pricing, measuring, uh, weighing, because now with eBay and Mercari, I make sure everything's weighed. Um, then I photograph and, you know, it depends on how many pieces I have. Right now, I'm pretty much doing like five at a time and just listing those um, just because things are a little, I have a little less quantity than usual. Um, but it might be in batches. So I will process a bunch of things and then just draft them and list them as I go. Um, and then everything goes in a bag and goes into my inventory, which is in my like 
bedroom, walk-in closet. I live in a one apartment bedroom. Everything's here. Um, I only have about 250 items in my Poshmark closet right now. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. They get pulled um, from the inventory based on their number. Some things get hung up and choose, obviously, but that's pretty much it. So going back to your photographing, are you a flat lay, hanger, or mannequin type of girl? Yep, um, I am a hanger girl. Um, I hang things up. I used to do flat lays, um, and then I... Luckily, the past two places I've lived, including this spot, have had a white brick wall on the balcony, so I just throw a 3M hook up there, and all of my photographs are outside, which can be kind of cold or hot, depending on the season. I'm in Maryland, so we get all the seasons. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I just think it looks clean, and it's easy and quick. Um, I think the flat plays used to take me a lot more time. So because you're photographing outside, do you try to batch... Um, photograph all in one day if there's like certain like really good light or something or does it not really matter too much? It doesn't matter a whole lot. I do find that there are certain times of day that work better depending on the season. Um, it doesn't really matter. Okay and what do you think is more important in a listing? The cover photo or the title? Oof. Um, gosh, Mark, let me rephrase because I think that the answer could change depending on what platform you're on. So on Poshmark, do you think the photo or the title is more important? It's just, this is a hard one. Um, I, I think in the beginning, I felt like the cover photo was the most important. People put a lot of emphasis on having a nice clean cover photo on Poshmark. But now I think it's coming a lot out a lot more that the title is really important, especially for your like your search engine optimization. Um, that's still a really hard choice. I think maybe title. I think I'm going to go with title now. I may have said cover photo before, but I'm changing and it. Title. If you're going to build a title, how how do you go about building your title? Uh huh. Um, I always start with the brand um, style name if I can find it. I'm I really like the research part of it. So if I can find a style name, I'll usually have it. Um, any, and then as much defining like adjectives as I can put in there. So color, if I can fit it, um, if jeans high rise, you know, if it's what kind of cut it is, if there's a button fly, um, as so brand style and as many descriptive words as I can get. Absolutely. And with your items, because you said that you like to pick up shoes, do you do a lot of cleaning with the shoes? And if so, what does that process look like? What products are you using? Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't do a whole lot of cleaning on shoes. I try to pick up shoes that are still sort of in good condition, but I do use um, Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam for leather. Um, I love that. Uh, and I do have a couple little other, I have like a suede eraser um, and, you know, just things like Lysol wipes around like rubber soles um, and bottoms work fine. So I'm not a huge shoe cleaner, but um, I do have a couple tools. Do your thrift stores write on the bottom of the shoes with Sharpie or Crayon? They do. I have used nail polish remover in the past to get those off. However, a lot of the times my Goodwill just does like the Roman numeral. So it's sometimes, a lot of times, like if it's a $10 shoe, it's just an X on the bottom. So sometimes I just leave it on there <laughs> and it's in the photo yeah. you know it's not like I'm hiding it from anyone so I love that so you're gonna put that in the description I take it what else do you like to provide in the description um I have a template for my description so it's easy I have like a text expander uh template so all my drafts get that template and then it's brand name um styles and features so any more descriptive, as many descriptive words I can get in there that are relevant, um, along with repeating the style name and everything. Then I will put in the, um, the condition and the measurements. Um, yeah. And then the size, I'll, I've just started reiterating the size as well, rather than just relying on the, um, like the button that Poshmark has for size. So that's, that's usually what they look like. Yeah, that's a good tip because there's been so many times where I realize I have put the wrong size in. <laughs> so having, to, having it in the description as well, it's just that double check for me that it's like, yes, this is a size six and not a size four. Mm -hmm. I want to backtrack real quick to you talking about text expander because if someone is new to Poshmark, I think it's an excellent tool. Um, talk about how you use it a little more and what it is in case anyone's not familiar. 
Yeah, I know there's an app. I actually don't use, I just use on, I have like an iPhone and a Mac. So you can, in your settings, in the keyboard settings, there's text replacement. So you put in like the phrase that you want to appear and then the shortcut. So you just type in, I just type in template. And uh, you know, if you press the space or enter or something, that whole template just populates. So it's really a really quick and easy thing. I do it with a lot. I do it with a lot of like, um, if I'm having a sale, I'll like just put a quick little three letter thing in my in a bundle for somebody and it'll just pop up. Hey, I'm having a 50% off sale. Let me know if you have any questions. So it's really useful. I love that. How often are you communicating with buyers in the bundle feature? Pretty often. Um, I definitely think it's one of the best features for driving sales on the app. Um, so, you know, if somebody likes multiple items, I'll just pop in, you know, if it's two or three items, I'll just add them to the bundle, send an offer and just leave a little quick comment like, Hey, thanks for checking out my closet. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, or if they liked a lot of things and I'm not quite comfortable putting together a 15 piece bundle for them, I will just put a blurb in like, Hey, thanks for checking my, out my closet. I'm always open to offers. Um, and if you add your items to the bundle, I'll send you an offer. So I use it pretty frequently. If I'm running a sale, I will let people know through the bundle feature. So yeah, I'm on it a lot. Do you feel like that generates you more buyers because you're so personable with them with that, that bundle feature? Yeah, I think anytime you can add a little extra communication um, to, uh, you know, to, for a buyer, um, that definitely helps. I, I've had a lot of success in different situations with communicating through the bundle feature. I, I think that's so awesome. I love, because I buy a lot on Poshmark, I love when sellers do that, when they yeah. communicate with me and let me know sales and stuff that they have going on. Because even though we might use our Instagrams or YouTubes to let people know about things, if you're not a follower of that person, you don't always know that they're having a sale or you might not see that graphic in their closet. So by being able to reach out, you're just... If, yep. Yeah, so if somebody's <laughs> searching for a specific item and they just see your listing and you don't have anything in your listing about the sale because it would be a pain to update every single listing saying you're having a sale, then they're not going to know and they might, you know, miss out on that deal. So exactly. if you can communicate with them that you're doing that, then... Who are some people in your community that just inspire you that we should be following and inspired by as well? One to mention that I am personally connected with, you know, I've met in person, hung out a couple times, um, and we were just talking about this is uh, Ashley at Ashley Maybe. Um, you know, we were talking about the posh and coffee and sips, and she's been hosting one for the past couple weeks. Um, so she's local to me. She has a really great account, um, very positive, just a nice down-to-earth girl. She puts out videos on Instagram every Tuesday. And then a couple more accounts that I just really love following for just they have beautiful posh closets and beautiful Instagrams and are positive people who put awesome things out in the world um, is Ivalia or Shop Ivalia. I don't know if you're familiar. She puts a lot out about like sustainable packaging or sustainable living and that kind of thing. And she has a gorgeous Poshmark closet. I've shopped it a couple times. Um, same thing with Desire Lux is another account. Um, just and she is just a really cute closet. She was one of the first people I think I started following on Poshmark even before I followed her on Instagram. Um, and I, again, she's just a favorite closet to shop and has a really nice variety of things. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. I'm going to link them all down below so it's easy to just one click and you can help support them as well. Danny, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be a part of this. It's been so awesome connecting with everyone during this quarantine. It's a little bit yeah. of a social aspect. Yeah, it's I'm nice. Really thankful that you were able to jump on today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was really excited to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else you want to say before we take off today? Um, I guess just like a little bit of advice is something that I've been telling myself over and over is just, you know, if you're taking on something new or if you're new to reselling, um, and things seem overwhelming, just take things a chunk, like a tiny chunk at a time. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I did with eBay when I started. That's what I'm doing with YouTube. Just, you know, look at things a chunk at a time and you don't have to do everything all at once. So. I think that is such excellent advice, not just for reselling, but life in general. So yeah. thank you so much, Danny, and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Courtney. See ya.